the art of overcoming objections. And I'm going to cover a couple different topics, but I want you to, number one is this. So I want you to address them before. And for short, it's address the objection before it becomes an objection. So part of the art of overcoming objections is, is you address these things before and you set their expectations. So how does it all work? Well, an example would be, let's say if you're meeting, if you're meeting a seller and you're meeting that seller and let's say that you're on the, you, 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 let's say you, they, you, you close the appointment and let's say now they're a customer. Well, what objections are they gonna have throughout the transaction? We already know that we're gonna have the showings we already know that the showings, the seller dealing with the showings, the showing feedback could potentially be what? An objection. Open houses, not doing open houses could be a potential objection that we have down the road. So I want you to know this, that, and, and right here is the beginning. And this is when the point when they hire you. And this is the point of where they wanna be. This is victory, this is success. I'm gonna talk more about this point today, but. I want you to understand that you need to, whether it's a lead or a customer, be able to communicate this process right here. From the time that they become a customer, the time that they close, the time they list the house, the time that we get the property sold, from the time that they meet with you to the time we find their perfect home. You wanna have this here as a process. And I've talked about this before. When we are intentional at the beginning, with no, to communicating with our lead or our customer how it's gonna end, what we can do is we can, we can hit these objection points throughout the process. You want, it, you want them to be able to see where you're taking them.